Hello, and welcome to another SimCenter demonstration from Engineering Advice. Today I'm going to demonstrate using SimCenter's Wave Geometry Linker by making an FEA simulation associative to the master part. This means that your FEA model will update if the master part is updated by you or someone else. So I've uploaded my part already. This is a femoral stem. It may be a sim center or an X part, or you may have imported it from a third party software. I'll set my roles to advanced. Roles tab, content, advanced, accept the information. And we'll head to the assembly navigator. There we can see our part already loaded. Our first main task is to go to the assemblies tab and create a new parent assembly for this cab part and for the uh, cab part that we'll create for the geometry for that we'll use for the FEA. Except OK and then we can see now an assembly created. The next task will be to create a dummy repository for the CAD information that we're going to use that will be uh, describing our FEA model. So we're going to create a new part and I shall call that the femoral stem for FEA. That's okay, no need to select an object as yet. That's a, just a dummy repository therefore created. We're going to make that our work part. There we have it. And we're going to wave geometry link our CAD part, our original master CAD part, to this FEA CAD part. So click on that, select the body. It allows us to, to select the original CAD master part and press OK. Now at this stage, you'll see a sort of graphics interruption here, which demonstrates that you are now showing two CAD parts. We don't want that. So we're just going to now just make our CAD part the display part. That's a right mouse button, make display part. And we'll bring it back into focus there nicely. Now that we've reached this stage, we're only showing our FEA part and not the assembly. We're going to create the FEA model in the normal way. So head up to application, pre and post, and create the new FEM and simulation models. I want to ensure that I've got the idealized part selected. We go ahead and again. Now down, if we look down in this lower view, we can see our original, this uh, CAD part for the FEA, the idealized model, the, the FEM model, and the, the entire simulation. So it's often useful to have an idealized part uh, so that we can make slight changes to the geometry that we'll use for the FEA. And I'm going to double click on that idealized part to do so. We get a reminder to promote the part. And so we head up here and promote the part. Okay. So I'm not particularly interested in having uh, this depression upon the spigot. So I'm going to now idealize the part by getting rid of that. So we head into that area. I might just update the parts. Uh, update the display, I should say, just to uh, tessellate it appropriately. And I'm going to delete, I'm just going to delete the radii and offset this face back to uh, a similar condition as the, the rest of the faces. So let's start off with deleting some faces. There we are. Delete those radii. 
I want to update the display once more and I'll just offset this region here by three millimeters. And there we can so easily see that we've uh, removed that information because we don't want to mesh that. We can now go ahead and put a mesh on here. So we'll select our FE model. Just remove that information about our idealized part. And I'm just going to put a simple mesh onto this body. Uh, I shall choose six millimeters mesh. Uh, in reality, you would probably need to improve your mesh quality in, in sort of these regions here in important regions. But for demonstration purposes, I'll just leave a simple mesh on there at the moment. I'm going to uh, create a collector. Uh, we'll create a physical property as well, and we'll choose our material property. This would be this uh, titanium alloy for this femoral stem. Press OK. OK, and everything's ready to go and we'll create a quick mesh on that model. There's the mesh. As I say, uh, it's, it, it's not well refined in this region and uh, if we were modelling properly, we'd, we'd spend a bit more time developing that mesh. But there we have uh, a, a reasonable mesh on, on, the, uh, on the part. The next point is to create some boundary conditions. So we're going to head to our symmetry a simulation model. We'll create a simple force uh, on, I think we'll put it on this face here, a thousand newtons. Uh, let's check our, our specified vector tangent, or oh, sorry, normal to that face, and perhaps in the opposite direction, and OK. We'll put a simple fixed constraint up on the spigot here, not an exact uh, replica of what's required, but uh, for demonstration purposes, we shall, we shall put that information in there. So now we have mesh, constraint and load, and we'll simply solve this model. Here we have the model so uh, solving. It should take around about 12 or 13 seconds to solve this. So that's uh, 8, 9, 10, 11. And there we have the model solved. I'll not review any information at the moment. We'll just go straight in, have a look at the, re the results. Uh, let's look at von Mises stress. And there we have our information Again, we can see that uh, the stress is not converged very well in this region and a finer mesh would make that more appropriate. We can also see that uh, this, the uh, part is not really doing a lot of work in this area. And this is where we can look at making associative changes. Now we can speak to the designer and uh, get a change made in that area. Oh, from the FEA perspective, I already have that part open, so I'm just going to return to that original CAD part. This is the, the main master part. And if we go to the part navigator uh, for demonstration purposes, I've previously created a lightning hole in that area. And we're going to, and that part is now been updated to include that. Let's head back to our simulation model. And we'll go and have a look at the FE model. The, uh, there, we'll double click that to open it. We're reminded there's some information here to tell us that there's been some changes made. And if we look at the part, we can actually see some indication of the witness marks of the new modification that's been made. SimCenter invites us to update the mesh up here, which we will do, update that mesh. 
and a new mesh is quickly created. We will head to our simulation model, just a little check to make sure that that modification hasn't had any effect on the boundary conditions, which it hasn't, and so we'll head off and do another solve. Again, this should take about 12 or 13 seconds. And there we have it finished. Cancel out of this information. Have a look at our von Mises stress. And there we can see uh, a little bit slightly higher stresses in this region, still very low. And the, the high stresses here previously was around about 65. We're just uh, a fractionally higher than that, so a fractionally higher stress in that region there. And that concludes the demonstration of using SimCenter's wave geometry uh, linker. And you can see that um, the, the CAD model, the, the CAD model was changed, and that allowed for a very easy uh, change to the simulation model. So I hope this has been useful. If so, please like and subscribe, and also you might like to visit our website. In the meantime, I wish you good luck with your modelling. Thank you.